building of up tunnel, near Tunnel Road, because that was the bus used to go up to the top of Upper Parliament Street and all that business, yeah. Just past where you were born. Yeah. Well, uh, I was, unlike, unlike age of five brothers, I, I didn't have any brothers or sisters. I was, you know, just, in fact, my mum and dad, my dad came, uh, I don't know what was happening, but my mum and dad, my mum and dad said to me, would you like a brother or a sister? I must have been about three. So I, I didn't really know what to say. So anyway, I ended up getting a dog. <laughs> so I, I don't know what happened. They pressed it out. Not a brother or a sister, but anyway, getting back to the thing. So, used to go, but you'll know this. There's a what's called a pawn shop in England with three big ball things outside. I mean, God knows what pawn means now, but that's another thing. Um, and, and there was this guitar in the window, and I jumped off the bus and I went in, into the shop and I said, How much do you want for that? And he said, It's and this is a lot of money. You, Fourteen pound, and that was like probably saying now, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars to a to a kid who's got no money. Right. So I said, oh, oh, I want that so bad. It was a Hoffman. It was a Hoffman. It was called a bit like Paul McCartney's uh, bass, the violin bass. It was a Hoffman. But anyway, it wasn't a bass. So I, I said, he said, well, I can. He said, you want to pay me in installments? He said, uh, that, you know, I said, well, I will. Event. So I just kept on going there every week and giving them a pound for about seven weeks. So I got to halfway and he said to me, you can have the guitar because I trust you to come back with the pound and, and pay it off in the next seven weeks. Wow. So I did. And then I got my dad who played trombone, uh, not that he knew about the guitar, but he helped me tune it and everything because he, he knew music. And then I just started watching Cliff in the Shadows, the Everly's if I could, and anybody on TV that played guitar. And I taught myself, I never had guitar lessons. Mm. And uh, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. So are we. So are we. Well, I wanted to be a, I wanted to play football, soccer, you know, for Liverpool, and I had two. Look at them legs, look at them legs. Well, those legs let me down because I think I got them uh, kicked. Uh, 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 the, the guys who were doing the trial at the same time as me, I mean, I thought I thought I had a Liverpool accent. And one guy said to me, I'm going to break your mm -mm leg mm -mm if you come anywhere mm -mm near me. I was playing against him in the trial. I said, don't worry, I'm not coming anywhere near you, mate. <laughs> that was the end of that career. <laughs> Very good idea. Very good idea. I'm happy, I'm happy that happened. So, so take us to the next step, the swing and blue jeans. Uh, the yes, girls, we couldn't get any, we were really good on stage, and no, known for being good and everything, but we, in those days you needed a hit record to get out of the local scene, really. Uh, like, like obviously the Beatles. The Beatles got a hit record, but what well, we do with the first and then please please me. And then when, when they got to number one, with the, they all moved to London, you know. But we were, I mean, I still had a job. Um, my first boss was a guy called Peter Harrison. And when I told him I was interested, you know, I, he said, what, what are your hobbies, what do you like? I said, football. And I said, play guitar. He said, oh, he said, my younger brother's in Hamburg playing at the moment. George Harrison's brother. So George used to come in all the time and get his car serviced and stuff. He used to give me strings and all that. He never gave me guitars, but he gave me strings <laughs> and, and plectrums or pegs, whatever you want to call them. But how I got into the Blue Jeans, we, we couldn't get a hit. And we were in the same stable, uh, uh, musical stable, that is, and, uh, as the Swinging Blue Jeans. And uh, Ralph Ellis, who was their guitar player, was leaving uh, for some reason. I've never known why. Uh, that were still having hits, and uh, they asked me to join them. And it was very sad to leave my pals from school, but uh, I, I just couldn't say no. And, you know, I was with them for three years, and I'd you know, toured all over Europe with them, and it was, I thought I'd made it. And then, of course, Graham Nash left the Hollies, and they, they came chasing after me for some daft reason. And I joined them, and then I knew I'd made it. So I was really happy. Amen. Well, you know, it's funny, though, it's such a wild thing.
yeah. such a rivalry between Manchester and Liverpool. I was wondering, I always wondered, did you get any stick for joining a well, big union man? Billy J. Graham still gives me stick. Oh, yeah, to yeah, this absolutely. Day. Yeah, to this day. I, he, you know how many times, you know, dear friends with Billy, he said, he'll say to me, you like Freddie and the Dream as Ken? I'm like, yeah, they were good. They're from Manchester, you know. I'm like, well, all right, all right, you see. Yeah, but did he tell you that the, the Goaters, his backing band were from Manchester? Yes, yes, which was all that. That's what I said to him when he said, how could you join the Hollies? I said, how could you have the Goaters back in? <laughs> but we have, we have a laugh together, don't we? Absolutely. Yes, we do. Joey, Billy and Terry. God. Terry's not telling them at all. Uh, Terry was in that band, he, he mentioned the Escorts. Uh, and they were known uh, all over England, really, and, uh, and especially in, in Lancashire, Manchester, you know, it's right up the road from Liverpool. And uh, you're talking about replacing Graham Nash in the Hollies, and uh, he's one of the main guys. This is the guy they gave the job to. But all of those other guys who tried it, this hmm. is the guy who got the job. This is the guy who did it. And that's what Teddy did. So, yeah. And by the way, if I can add, and it, your, your halo is going to get very tight, <laughs> the hits didn't just stop. It, Graham and what Alan Clark did, the, those songs are amazing, but the air that I breathe, everything that followed, Terry, it's brilliant work. Long Cool Woman, Long Cool Woman, woman. that's my favorite. Yeah. I, I, I love that song. Yeah. 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 I played yeah. yeah. Long Cool Woman yeah. yeah. on the air when and you know, and that's because I'm not just playing to people of our age. They're they're twenty year olds playing air drums along with boom boom. Well, the thing I'm always, especially coming here and look, well, looking out the window almost, is uh, that horrific day 9/11. We never, no, no one will ever forget that. Mm -hmm. The firefighters and everybody who they basically picked. He and Harry, he's my brother to be almost their anthem because pictures of them carrying a, a body on their shoulder, I mean, it was unbelievable. And so we, you know, we were very proud to do that and to have some kind of influence on, you know, maybe. And I know sadly people use here heavy uh, to just bury their brothers and things like that, you know, in general, in, nothing to do with 9-11. But it's a gorgeous song and it, 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 it is heartfelt. Beautiful know. song written by Bobby Scott, Bobby Russell. Americans and uh, one of them, Bobby Russell, wrote uh, Besame Mucho as well. <laughs> you knocked it out of the park, my friend. Very proud of you, Heavy. I'm also, I'm proud to be in the Rock and Roll Hall, Hall of Fame. Right? Yeah. And let's get, let's get back from the ring next. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Joey, so Play a little, just play a, a couple of nights, like, give me some bad things. Yeah. Give me a little something. Yeah. A little, whatever you think, no matter what. Yes. <laughs> nice. And That's it? Come on. Come on. Absolutely. And a revival thanks to the perfect song to use at the perfect end of a brilliant show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breaking that. Yes, I got what I did say. Get you away, get you wrong, my love. All that time, get out of the way. Something bad. I thought, oh my God, what's he asking <laughs> now? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that. 
no one said, tell me something bad. Play a little bad. A little bad. Are you the same guy that talked about before? Yeah, of course he is. A few cases are rare. A song about wrote about being on tour in America, and it's it was a bit of a different kind of song uh, uh, for, for bad things to do anyway. And um, George actually, George Anderson really liked it. Um, he really changed it. You know, I wrote the song like this. Slide solo, and what I gotta tell you is uh, this is day after day we're talking about. Uh, they, they, George and Peter learned that solo exactly how it goes on the record and did it live on the record. Both of them played it together in two mm. and the harmony bits all together, all live. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like two or three takes. Took them hours to get it. Right, but once they got it, the slide is a very kind of you know, you've got to get right on the note, you know, right. to get it all, all perfect. 
but I can't hear it any other way. It's absolutely the perfect solo. For it is song. a great solo. Yeah. It's, beautiful. it's a beautiful record. That it is. Yeah, every time I hear it. And by the way, do you guys know where the title of his band, Badfinger, came from? It's, it's, I mean, a lot of you, there are people here who know everything, people who are just guessing. The band was originally called The Ivies. And I, from the stories that I heard, and again, these are stories that are written. Do you know why they were called The Ivies? No, I don't. The Hollies and The Ivies. <laughs> Duh. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> Duh. You feel like an idiot, of course, obviously. Now when you say it, like total up. Holly's fine. And Mal Evans was the one who found you, you know, the Mr. Everything. You know, George Martin's the fifth Beatle, Brian Epstein's the fifth Beatle. Mal Evans, I mean, you know, when you see it in, in the Get Back movie, Mal, make sure there's cheese on the broccoli. Mal, we need an anvil. Mal, hold the lyrics. Mal, go get this. Mal, we need a spaceship. Mal, we, and, okay. Mm. And, you know, to have a guy like that. Mal lived very close to me on Allison Road. And I asked him once, uh, cause you know, I mean, we used to play the cabin and play other places, see the Beatles walking in town. Paul lived a hundred yards away, but, so in other words, you'd never ask for their autograph, you know, it would be too it's embarrassing. Yeah. So I asked him to get, uh, could you do, because John had written those two books in his own right and I spent it in the words. And I said to Mal, well actually, the funny thing is my, my first wife, Linda, uh, she worked in a, in a bookshop uh, downtown called, it was a, well, I can't remember what it was called, it, but it was the big posh one down in town. Anyway, and she, she, they had, you know, books, they, they always, she was selling the Beatles book. Now, her job, one of the jobs she had was an extra thing to do, was to look at books and, and see if there's any, you know, the pages missing or things like that, you know, before you could sell it. Well, she, she found a Spaniard in the works and, um, what was the other one? So, right. oh, I thought I was going to say the hard days, no, I don't Yeah, he was doing his own right. Uh, and both of them, they, they could, she gave, you know, they, the, the boss in a bookshop said, well, you can have them. So he gave, I, you know, she gave them to me and I gave them to uh, Mal and said, can you do us a favor? Could you get, get the lads two more to go? But you don't, don't, please, don't have to say it's me unless you want to. Anyway, so three of them, uh, I think Paul, yeah, Paul, George and Ringo wrote in one, just their names. And then in, in his own right, John said, to Terry, good heavens, John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to tell you that I've still got them, but I don't. Because when my first wife and I got divorced, I went back the next day to get all my gear, and I couldn't find the books. <laughs> well, I was very glad that John and the Beatles signed millions of autographs. It wasn't exactly a Paul Newman autograph. So I don't, I don't feel too bad about it. Okay. That's my story anyway. Very good. That's why. So going back to it, so the story as it was written, if it's true, was that John Lennon had hurt his finger. Now he's playing the piano and he called it the bad finger boogie. Now the reason I brought up Mal Evans is because Mal was the one who found you guys, right? Mal was the guy who produced Mal, your first. Uh, yeah, Mal, Mal uh, saw the band I think at the market. <laughs> right. It was a little closer. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't there of course. Uh, uh, but he saw them playing, I think, at the marquee. But the real story about them getting a deal uh, comes from the pianist, uh, Bill, Bill Collins, our manager. He was, he was the Ivy's personal manager. An old uh, jazz pianist from Liverpool. And you know, he sold his life insurance and funded the band with it. Yeah, I'm serious. Mm. And he, he uh, got them writing songs. He was really responsible for those guys getting 